Florida City volunteers distribute financial assistance to 674 affected households before Thanksgiving. Dr. Zhen Xiaozhu leads medical team to perform 14-hour corrective surgery for a Filipino scoliosis patient. Welcome to Headlines on Lori Chen. Thank you for joining us. Last month, Hurricane Michael ravaged through Panama City, Florida. In the aftermath of the disaster, USCG volunteers quickly launched the disaster relief assessment team. After getting the final list of affected households, a total of 674 affected families received the much appreciated financial assistance just in time for Thanksgiving. Today we have the Suchi Foundation coming and giving to Panama City. Your head person here told me, he said, Arthur, our master says, we all breathe the same air, we all walk the same ground. Today, in that tent, we will all breathe the same air, we will all walk the same ground together. Our whole house is not livable. We're not able to live in because we've had a lot of water damage. I think I got like 600 for me and my family. And then we got the nice blanket made out of plastic bottles. I felt overwhelmed with joy. <laughs> so happy. A lot of these people here have lost everything. They may not even have clothes, let alone where they live. And to have somebody step in and do what this organization is doing for our community is beyond wonderful. I was actually working during the storm, so we were going from door to door, helping people out. I think we worked 24 days on without a day off. I believe I received a $600 gift card, which I'm super appreciative of. The way that the cards are given is very special. It's nice that the whole concept encourages respect on both sides. And people really do react how you treat them. I'm super surprised by it, super grateful. I didn't expect anything like that. You definitely don't do this job expecting to get something back in return. It's just to give. Giving something to them. So instead of coming out of here depressed, you come out of here feeling even better about society because people are helping each other. A very positive and healing energy. We received $600 today, which is very thankful and helpful probably get some food, some clothes, and it's going to be a better Thanksgiving. It's, this really helped out a lot. Thanksgiving is approaching. Thanksgiving is just like the Chinese Lunar New Year in Taiwan. It's a holiday for family reunion. We rush to distribute the cash cards when we have Thanksgiving, our way of sending blessings directly. Although it's not a lot of money, only a few hundred dollars, we believe it will warm their hearts for the Thanksgiving holiday. That's what we really want to do. This is also a blessing from our founder, Dharma Master Zheng Yin. In 2016, Tsuji started helping many young single mothers with financial assistance and accommodations. In addition, the Jordan government has also allowed many of the refugees to work, as Tsuji helped out with the nanny program to care for their children. One 23-year-old Syrian single mother of two is a domestic violence survivor. She's very grateful for Tsuji's assistance and accompaniment through the ordeal. She's now slowly putting her life back together again. I want to go to Denmark. Every person misses their family, and it doesn't matter if one has a job or not. If I can stay with my parents, I am willing to do hard work. <laughs> Ashraq had married at the age of 18, flew from Syria to Jordan in early 2013, fleeing the war but now facing the challenge of domestic violence. At the beginning of our marriage, our life is still good, and then my husband started to hit me. After we have children, the situation became more serious, and he started drinking, and even gave his one-year-old child a drink. 
To become a better mother, she gave up her four-year marriage and decided to be committed to helping her child's goodness. My son Ahmed, although he is very naughty, he is a very generous child. If you want his candy, he will give it to you right away. But the problem is that he was beaten in the room by his grandfather when he was very young. So he sometimes has aggressive behavior, but his heart is very kind. The Jordanian government began to issue work permits to Syrian refugees in 2016, allowing Ashraqa to have the opportunity to work in supermarkets, clinics, etc. She began working in a store specializing in women's goods. The customers and business is relatively simple, which helps stabilize her mind and body. Thank you very much, Tsuji. And without your help paying the rent at the shelter sponsored by Tsuji, otherwise we would be on the streets. And without your nanny care, I wouldn't be able to work and earn a salary. You solve so many of my problems. The hourly salary is equivalent to 1.5 U.S. dollars, and the monthly expenses are only 300 U.S. dollars. When there's medical need, you still have to borrow money from people. Outside of refugee camp, because of government regulations, they can go to hospitals run by the Jordanian government and private hospital clinics for medical treatment. However, the registration fee is 10 US dollars, and this is just part of the cost as it does not include fees associated with seeing the doctor. So actually, they can't see the doctor at all. Uh, I'm Jordanian. It has been 23 years since I opened my own dental clinic in 1995. Of course, Jordanians and Syrians are brothers. We are Muslims, and our religion always teaches us to help other Muslims. Any Muslim is a brother, even if we are not neighbors. Doctors care for the ill and city volunteers provide soothing comfort. As Rackett, who is only 23 years old this year, always smiles. She believes that she and her children have a hopeful future. I hope my children can get the highest education. My son Ahmed always says that he wants to be a doctor. My youngest son also says that he wants to be like his brother. I hope that they will study hard and receive higher education and have good living conditions and none of difficulties like their parents. This week, Dharma Master Zheng Yin met with overseas volunteers in Taizong. There were special performances done by local volunteers from Mozambique and Zimbabwe. They also brought back their bamboo coin banks in hopes to help others in need. Many volunteers shared their personal experiences, and Dharma Master Zheng Yin encouraged them to keep up the excellent work. Oh. <laughs> oh. Volunteers perform the scene of a cow fearing to be killed. It's a custom for African in Mozambique to seek solutions from the shaman when encountering difficulties. <laughs> Local volunteers put on a real story in which the husband had an affair and the wife turned to the shaman for help. Usually they would seek relief on a shaman, but in the end it was the respect and love and the selfless giving that the volunteers brought changed their family relationship. 
Tila has lost both of her parents in warfare, and her husband died young after they got married. Her past was a long period of sorrow, but now she has found peace in Sichi, and her daughter has also become a Sichin. Master, I want to tell you that ever since I joined Sichi, I've become a whole new person. I've left all my past behind. This 81-year-old local volunteer has actively invited community members to volunteer. Now, over 40 community volunteers are caring for more than 300 households. In Zimbabwe, Tsiji conducted an aid distribution after the local election in August. Volunteers expressed their concerns about children losing their lives due to the famine. We try to provide them with snacks from Monday to Saturday. Even though they live an impoverished life, the local volunteers kept a pure and determined heart to serve. This is five cents and will pass this spirit to future generations. Volunteers save up the bamboo coin bank to help affect the residents of Indonesia earthquake. The adorable local volunteers also exhibited the bags and hats they made from recycled goods, as well as giving a solemn performance. In September of last year, the island of St. Martin was hit hard by Hurricane Irma. When the affected residents, a car rental company employee, Ms. Angela, lost everything, her job and her home, all in an instant. However, she not only refused to take the relief goods, but instead joined in the ranks of Tsiji volunteers in helping out other affected residents. This year, in order to come to Taiwan to be certified as a Tsiji commissioner, she decided to borrow money from the bank so that she can buy her plane ticket. In the aftermath of Hurricane Irma, the island of St. Martin has been in a rebuilding process. There are several local volunteers that have been working with Tsiji in aiding the affected. This included Miss Angela. Everybody bought the ticket uh, to come to, to, to Taiwan, but uh, three weeks before we come in, the hurricane came. So we couldn't make the, 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 the trip because the airport was closed, plus I lost my house. When the hurricane hit, Ms. Angela lost both her job and her home. However, she did not immerse herself in sorrow, but stayed active in helping other affected residents. This year, the timing is finally right. She bought a plane ticket by borrowing money from the bank. She's more than excited to finally come and be certified as a city commissioner. Oh, I feel wonderful. I feel wonderful, yes. It's, it's not the same being there and being here. When you come here, you have another... Uh, um, vision that what, what, what's really going on. It's the gift Thank from Master. Yeah. And it, it's a seed. Good seeds will sprout quickly. It's been five years since Typhoon Haiyan ravaged through the Philippines. The local volunteers continue to send love to all corners. This year, there are many new faces that are ready to show their more responsibilities. I was a volunteer in training last year, and from that moment on, I knew I had found the life path that I've been looking for. Dharma Master Zen Yan encourages all the volunteers to stay motivated and let go of our habitual tendencies. This way we can truly be a positive force for humanity. The Taipei Tsiji Hospital's orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Zhen Xiaozu, has performed a surgery on a Filipino scoliosis patient, Trisha. After the 14-hour surgery, her spinal curvature of 140 degrees was now lessened to 80 degrees. Trisha is recovering well after the surgery and is expected to undergo the second stage of operations in about two weeks' time. At 7.30 in the morning, Superintendent Zhao Youchen and Chief Secretary Chao Lihua accompanied the patient Trisha and her mother to the operation room, giving them the much-needed support. 
after undergoing anesthesia, Chief Surgeon Zhen Xiaozu gets ready for the surgery. After the first incision at 10:45 a.m., he spent a total of five hours carefully inserting surgical nails in the patient's thoracic and lumbar vertebrae. Then he started to cut and reshape the spine in order to relax it. After that, the most important corrective procedure wasn't performed until the evening. Since Trisha's spinal curvature of 140 degrees is considered a severe case, and the doctor found out that she also has genetic disorder where cysts form within the spinal cord. Therefore, a neuromonitor was arranged to check her nerve reactions. They also woke her up during the surgery to ensure that her nerves were not damaged during the operation. After the 14-hour surgery, the first stage of Trisha's corrective surgery has reached its goal. She's recovering well and no longer needs to stay intubated anymore. Looking at her post-operation x-rays, the space between her rib cage has been opened up. Her 140 degree spinal curvature has now been decreased to about 80 degrees, so we have reached our estimated goal. I am grateful to Dr. Zhen. Trisha's conditions have really changed. The patient's mother had not slept for the entire night. The efforts of the medical staff and volunteers have deeply touched her. Trisha will move out of the ICU soon, and she is expected to undergo the second stage of the surgery in two weeks' time. The Spinal Dysrephorism Center at the Taipei Tsiji Hospital recently took in the case of a girl from China who is only one year and ten months old. The little girl, Huang, spiked a high fever after her birth and was referred to the Taipei Tsiji Hospital through a doctor from China. After a thorough examination, it was confirmed that symptoms and problems have been caused by congenital spinal bifida. Thanks to a well-experienced professional medical team, she had received the life-altering surgeries and treatments that she couldn't get back in China. Little Huang is well on her way to a higher quality of life. Little Huang, who is being held in her grandmother's arms, is only one year and ten months old. Due to the fact that she often gets urinary tract infections with high fevers, half of her time after birth has been spent in the hospital. When she was nine months old, in order to reduce the recurrence of UTIs, a Foley catheter was put in. After leaving the hospital for a day or two, she would start to have fevers again, so we would have to head back to the hospital. Being in and out of the hospital this much, it's quite troublesome. The Nefoli catheter was put in, and it was a painful process. Due to the lack of clinical experience in China, they came to Taiwan to seek help from the pediatric urology specialist, Dr. Yang Shu Di. Through a thorough examination, it was found that little Huang's bladder capacity is only at 20 cc, which is at a much smaller capacity than an average child's 50 cc. So this makes her have the phenomenon of versico utero reflex, which not only causes infections, but can also damage her kidney functions. When this little baby is peeing, her urine will actually flow back to the kidneys and then flow out again. So every time she urinates, bacteria will be brought back to the kidneys. This is what's causing the high fevers to occur. Then she would need to be hospitalized. So to solve this issue, we would need to enlarge the bladder so that the urine does not flow backwards. Little Huang's urinary tract disease is one type of congenital spinal bifida. Although the spine is not deformed, the nerves of the vertebral capillaries were damaged. Therefore, Dr. Yang Xu Di used Botox injections to relax Little Huang's bladder muscles and increase the bladder capacity in order to solve the problem of VUR. The doctor's attitude toward the patient was very good. He was very thorough and thoughtful. Also, the treatment plan that he recommended is not even available back home in China. Patients with spinal bifida, depending on the type and severity, require different types of surgery. It's quite difficult to treat. Therefore, it's necessary to have a multidisciplinary medical team in order for the treatment outcome to be of the highest quality. In our next report, we will meet a cancer ward nurse who had found out that she too has cancer herself. Having realized how impermanent life is, she actively participates in charity activities. She hopes that she can seize every opportunity she has to do good deeds for humanity. Wow. Hi, 
Hugging these children with love, Liu Jiaying, whose child is in senior high school, has come here to realize her dream. I am actually a single mother with a child. I did not do a very good job educating my child. Therefore, this is to make up for it. If there are other children around me, I hope to provide them with care. 42-year-old Liu Jiaying has been working as a cancer ward nurse for the past 20 years. As she helped the patients in their battle against cancer, she has also found out she has cancer. I feel that I cannot lose for these cancer patients. I want to tell them that they need to keep on fighting. Therefore, I cannot be beaten either. Having been diagnosed with cancer, Jiaying has realized the impermanence of life. Therefore, she has speeded up in doing good deeds. I can learn from her that passion and positivity in addition to enthusiasm and optimism. I end up doing things with more energy because when I know that my life is limited, I am motivated to accomplish these things sooner. For Jiaying, the challenges in life are simply tests for her. She's ready to embrace a brighter future with determination and enthusiasm. Since 2012, TMA coordinator Dr. Fan Wenshen connected Siji's dental clinic with the Genesis Social Welfare Foundation in Xinzhou. Recently, the Rotary Club has also donated two mobile dental cleaning devices. All the entities hope to provide complete care in order to decrease the risk of dental infections for persistent vegetative state patients. Doctors are cleaning the teeth while volunteers come for the patient. Tima is hosting a free dental clinic at the Genesis Social Welfare Foundation in Xinzhu. The doctor is very humorous and his interaction with patients made them feel calm and safe. We're very moved. Tima has been providing regular dental care since 2012. This year, a charity organization donated medical equipment. We need a lot of human resources and equipment to execute a care plan for PVS patients. We need to canvas many social resources to make this plan work. Currently, we have two floors of wards, but now we are adding one more floor. That's why we must purchase two more mobile dental cleaning devices. The current Rotary Club president is a dentist, while the president-to-be is a Tsuji volunteer. Their rare connection made this free clinic happen. Tima doctors from Taipei also came to learn. They have been doing evaluations before the clinic. On the day of the procedure, there were also some doctors standing by in case of an emergency. Dr. Fan said that he would come to check on the patients after the operations to monitor their conditions. The complete medical procedures have practically safeguarded residents' health and reduced the chance of them getting illness due to malnutrition. Penang Tsuji volunteers in Malaysia recently walked into various communities to promote Tsuji Jinsu products and environmental protection concepts to the public. Let's check out what the public's reactions are. Thank you for watching. See you next time.